Welcome to the joy of music. My name is Diane Bish, and I would like to invite you to join us today as we come to you from the region of Normandy and visit the historic sites from World War II. We want to pay tribute to the courageous soldiers who served and gave their life for the freedom of the world. Thank you for joining us as we bring you a tribute to those who served. Behind me stands Omaha Beach. The name Omaha Beach, until June 6, 1944, was only a name that existed as an allied code word designating one of the sections of the Normandy coastline to be assaulted in the early hours of that fateful day. The austere and desolate appearance, at least in its eastern part along the narrow beach backing on barren cliffs, makes the invasion scene easy to imagine, even today. The St. Laurent Cemetery stands as a moving testimony to the thousands of young men who came from far shores to liberate an oppressed continent and fight for the freedom of millions. Along the beaches of Normandy, landmarks of heroism are found everywhere. Museums, memorials, statues, ruined bunkers, tanks, and other remnants of war. All a reminder and a tribute to the servicemen who gave all for their country. On the walls of the memorial at the Saint Laurent Cemetery are maps detailing the invasion and liberation of the French towns and countryside by the various divisions, brigades, and infantries.
The Pointe d'Arc was one of the strong points of the German fortifications before becoming a shrine to the bravery of the young American soldiers when it was attacked by Colonel Rudder's Rangers on the morning of June 6. There were 225 men in this assault and only 90 survived. The site has changed little since June 6, 1944. It remains a moonscape of bomb craters and shattered German bunkers. The Pointe d'Arc is American territory given to us as a gift from France. The small town of St. Mary Eglise was the principal objective of the 82nd Airborne Division on the early morning of June 6, and the first French city liberated by the Americans. It was the site of three days of intense fighting as the Germans repeatedly counterattacked in attempts to retake the strategic town from the occupying American paratroopers. The town is best remembered for its small cathedral where an American paratrooper became trapped when his parachute was ensnared by the steeple. A replica parachutist still hangs there today. There are two stained glass windows in the church, which are a tribute to those who liberated St. Mary Eglise. They depict symbols from the war and pay tribute to those who fought for our freedom. The milestones of liberty are dotted all along the path of the U.S. Army liberating France all the way to Bostonia. Here we are standing at kilometer zero in front of the Hotel de Ville in the small town of St. Mary Eglise. In tribute to those who served and the many who gave their lives in doing so, we recall the words of a great statement of faith, the hymn, God of our fathers, whose almighty hand leads forth in beauty all the starry band of shining worlds in splendor through the skies, our grateful songs before thy throne arise. From wars, alarms, and deadly pestilence. In our free land by thee our lot is cast. Be thou our ruler, guardian, guide, and friend. Refresh thy people on their toilsome way. Lead us from night to never-ending day. Fill all our lives with love and grace divine. And glory, laud, and praise be ever thine.
At the American Military Cemetery, the 9,385 marble crosses stand aligned in an impressive sight. At the head of the cemetery stands a memorial and monument. Inscribed on the walls of the memorial are a map of the military operations, as well as the names of 1,557 soldiers whose remains are known only to God.
In our tribute to those who served and sacrificed so much, we turn to the words of the great hymn of faith written by Isaac Watts. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Under the shadow of thy throne, still may we dwell secure. Sufficient is thine arm alone, and our defense is sure. A thousand ages in thy sight are like an evening gone, short as the watch that ends the night before the rising sun. Overlooking the sea, the American cemetery contains over 9,000 perfectly aligned white crosses on a 170-acre plot, which is conducive to reflection and remembrance. Most of the soldiers buried here lost their lives at the time of the D-Day landings. A chapel and a memorial dedicated to the youth of America add the finishing touch to this most moving scene.
the famous hymn tells us, this is my father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my father's world. Why should my heart be sad? The Lord is king, let the heavens reign. God reigns, let earth be glad. Today on The Joy of Music, we have paid tribute to the courageous men who fought and the many who died in World War II, the D-Day landings, and the Battle of Normandy. For every injury or loss of life, there was a loved one back home who mourned. We honor the courage of those who faced the stark possibility of severe injury or even death for our freedom and the freedom of millions worldwide. Their sacrifices, discipline, and heroism make our freedom possible today. And for this, we will forever be grateful. If you would like to purchase today's program or any program 
in our library of over 400 videos and CDs from the great organs and historic churches of the world. Please call 1-800-933-4844. We hope to hear from you.